There are very few things more instantly gratifying than removing a working gasket of your 3D printer's bed. Two videos ago, I was raving about the features of the Two Trees Bluer Plus, but I purchased the Artillery Sidewinder X1 version 4. And I have to say that my personal FDM 3D printing workflow has improved dramatically. A coincidence of necessities and a viewer's opinion steered me to this purchase. Felipe, if you're watching this, thank you for reaching out and contributing with my decision. The X1 is really enjoyable to work with. The workflow gets really simplified compared with my Sapphire S. I was up and running within two hours, tuned the pressure rollers on the bed rail and gantry. Because the bed has only one rail, it makes the roller tuning much easier. I used to think that the dual rails were much better, but now I've seen the light. Lastly, I flipped the filament runout sensor because it seemed to be mounted upside down. The filament runout sensor is well placed and it is placed on a flexible holder which allows it to rotate as the filament moves thus relieving the strain on the sensor and the filament. I tested the filament runout sensor and the 3D printer will beep a few times to alert you when the filament runs out. The 3D printer will lift the nozzle above the 3D print for 10 or 20 millimeters, which will not interfere with the 3D print below as some of the oozing plastic may touch it. Additionally, if you want to lift the nozzle higher because you may need to get access and clean the excess debris, you can move it from the 3D printer's menu. When you resume 3D printing, it will resume properly from where left off, including whatever moves you may have applied from the menu. I think that is really useful and easy to use. All moves on any axis will be remembered on resume. The direct extruder on the X1 works much cleaner. I use a soft metal brush to clean the hot end and the nozzle. I used mostly PETG and the results are much better than my Sapphire S. Very little debris is left on my 3D prints. The bed is just awesome. The models unglue themselves as the temperature drops. Uh, well, that's only for PETG. For TPE, you have to peel it off while it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. <laughs> I used 70 to 80 degrees and it has been an absolute dream on the bed. I have not had the need to use glue at all for PETG, TPE and TPU. I did not need the metal spatula, I actually do not use it because you'll scratch the bed. A plastic spatula may be better for this bed. I haven't printed no PLA Schmiele, only TPU, PETG and TPE and I have to find the plastic spatula if I need it, so far I haven't. The first 3D print was TPU and got ruined by the silicone sock that kept on sliding off the heating block. And dragging on top of the 3d print that could have been just my 3d printer or they need to revisit this silicone sock issue in the next iteration remove the sock and all got better after that no more issues for me this 3d printer works like a dream out of the box and i do not care to update a thing Knowing my track record, I may do more damage than actual improvements. The 3d printer is very smooth and it is quiet especially if you don't need cooling the ball bearing filament holder is smooth and the only issue I had was with TPE. TPE being quite elastic and soft coupled with the heft of the spool, the extruder could not unspool the filament because it skips. So you have to unspool it manually for it to feed properly. I made a review in the past about the features of this 3D printer and I thought it's quite complete. Experiencing the Sidewinder X1 in action, it's headache free. Is there any room for improvements you may ask? Well, actually there is. I think an extra stepper motor to unwind the spools for TPE or other softer filaments coupled with whatever else would work. I do not care about the lack of a bed leveling probe. To me that is just another point of failure and a possible hassle when it fails. Another thing that could be improved would be the positioning of the induction and stops on the Z axis. They mount on designated holes and if you want to add a glass plate or any other surface on top of the bed then you have to improvise something. The touch screen is very responsive and comfortable to use. There hasn't been one single time when it has not responded. The nozzle goes to maximum 270 Celsius and it gets there quite fast. The bed is connected at 110 volts or 220 respectively in your nation <laughs> and it gets up to temperature fast as well. One thing to note, you have to download the Cura profile from 3D Nexus. The link is in the description. 
It makes the 3D printer much more reliable and it takes into account the nozzle priming and it saves your bed from scratches as the profile is really well thought out. This is the first 3D printer that I do not have to supervise the first layer. In addition, I moved from 3D printing a brim to just 3D printing a skirt. It is that reliable. I may have gotten lucky with the AX1, but it works without intervention. Now I can focus on tweaking my profiles rather than tweaking the hardware. I cannot wait to see version 5 or maybe version 1 of a large Core XY from Artillery, but until then I bid the Mon Ami's farewell and adieu.